Welcome to the Wanderers History Podcast. Today we talk about one of the most interesting figures of the late 17th and early 18th century Eastern European culture, politics and diplomacy, Dimitri Kantemir, also known as Demetrius Kantemir and for the Ottomans Dimitri Kantemiroglu. He was voivode of Moldova on two occasions, first between March and April 1693 and then 1710 till 1711. He was also a philosopher, historian, composer, musicologist, linguist, ethnographer, and geographer. He is generally regarded as a key figure of Moldovan and Romanian enlightenment, and overall a culturally revolutionary figure. Before we continue, I would like to remind you to please subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss any new material from the podcast. He was born in Silisten, now Dimitri Kantemir in the Vaslui County in Romania, on October 26, 1673. His father, Constantin Kantemir, was of of Crimean Tatar origins, whereas his mother was of local Moldovan nobility. Moldova at the time was a vassal state to the Ottoman Empire, with Constantin Kantemir being named Voivod of the Principality of Moldova by the Turks in 1685. Between 1687 and 1710, Dimitri Kantemir spent most of his time and his youth as a ward, slash also envoy in Constantinople, living in the palace that he owned, the Dimitri Kantemir Palace, where he learned Old Ottoman and studied Ottoman history at the Patriarchate's Greek Academy. With his father's death, in 1693, Dimitri Kantemir briefly became voivode of Moldova, but was passed over within three weeks in favor of Constantin Duca, whose candidacy was supported by his father-in-law, the Valachian voivode Constantin Brinkovano. Valachia, as well as Moldova, was a vassal-slash-tributary kingdom to the Ottoman Empire. In 1710, Dimitri Kantemir was appointed voivode in his own right. He delivered many internal reforms, including a centralization of power of the ruler of the voivod, solidified by the influence of the church in order to keep at bay oligarchic noble families from taking power. He improved the Moldovan military and finances, bearing in mind the very limited time that he had, that being less than two years. His rule was known as a brief period of prosperity for Moldova. In a strange turn of events, Dmitry Kantemir believed that the Ottoman Empire was declining, or indeed collapsing, so as a result he placed Moldova under Russian control through a secret agreement signed at Lutsk. He then joined Peter the Great and his war against the Turks, that being the Russo-Ottoman War of 1710-1711, also known as the Prut River Campaign. This conflict ended badly for the Russians and for Kantemir because the Ottomans defeated them at Stanilesht, a battle that took place between 18th and 22nd of July 1711. And as a result, the Kantemirs were forced into Russian exile. In Russia, Dmitry Kantemir was made Russian prince, known also as Knyaz, by Peter the Great. And he was also made Prince of the Holy Roman Empire by Emperor Charles VI. He lived on a private estate at Dmitrovka near Oriol. Dmitry's son, Antioch Kantemir, would become Russia's ambassador to Great Britain and later on France. And he would become a friend of Montesquieu, Voltaire, and in the process he would be known as the father of Russian poetry. As I've mentioned in the introduction, Dmitry Kantemir's work was extensive and covered many subjects, and as a result, we need to split it into several categories. The first one would be a literary one, and that included a work called Divanul sau Gălceava Înțeleptului Culumea sau Giudețul Sufletului Cutrupul, 
rough translation of this from Romanian would be the quarrel of the wise man with the world. It was written an, in Romanian and Greek, and it was printed in Yash, this being the former capital of Moldova, in 1698. This piece of work is considered the first original Romanian work with philosophical and religious thought discussing themes such as the role of humankind in the world. In terms of historical writing, Dimitri Cantemir's best-known work was his History of the Growth and Decay of the Ottoman Empire, a great source explaining in two parts the ascension and decline of the Ottoman Empire as a world power from the times of the Seljuk Turks and Manzikert to the conquering of Constantinople in 1453 to the reigns of Selim II and Suleiman the Magnificent. This would inspire other figures such as Edward Gibbon to write the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. In his History of the Ottoman Empire, Dimitri Cantemir wrote extensively on the Fourth Ottoman-Venetian War between 1570 and 1573, and the rule of Selim II, known also as Selim the Sot, as the beginning of a declining, unsustainable Ottoman Empire. While he was forcefully exiled by the Ottomans from Moldova after the affair at Stanilesht, Kantemir did spend a large time of his youth in the Ottoman Empire, mainly in Constantinople and Adrianople, and he was dedicated to Ottoman culture. It can be argued that Dimitri Kantemir is, at least in part, one of the fathers of Romanian history because he also published the first critical history of Romania as a whole, known as the Chronicle of the Antiquity of the Romano Moldavo Valachians, in Romanian that being Chronicul Vechimei a Romano Moldo Vlahilor. This was written between 1719 and 1722. It asserted the Latin origin of the Romanian language and the Roman origin of the people living within the former lands of Dacia, an important foundational stone of the theory of the ethnogenesis of the Romanian people in the Carpathian, Danubian, Pontic region that today is known as Romania. Dimitri Cantemir would also write his description of Moldavia in Latin, Descriptio Moldavia, in 1714 at the request of the Royal Academy in Berlin. It covered geographical, ethnographical and economic aspects of Moldavia, an important landmark in European map making and printing at the time. Other works in history would include Monarchiarum Physica Examinatio, The Research of Nature of Monarchies, he also wrote a historical biography of his father, Constantin Cantemir, voivod of Moldova that was written between 1716 and 1718. The Latin name of that was Vita Constantini Cantemiri, Conomento Senis Moldaviae Principis. Dimitri Cantemir also had a keen interest into music, the research, development and influences of Ottoman music from the Levantine re regions or the Saudi Peninsula or Persia. He wrote the Kitab Musiki Ebjed, Book of Musical Notation, written in Turkish, and it was one of the first musical writings by Kantemir, written between 1705 and 1706. It contained more than 360 music pieces written by him also an in-depth analysis of Ottoman music, both religious and secular, and a first system of musical notation in an alphabetical order for Ottoman music. His music today is still held in high regard, as we see the likes of Horti Saval performing many of Cantemir's works. All in all, it can be argued that Dimitri Kantemir was a remarkable polymath impacting the fields of history, geography, cartography, music, while also being a diplomat and key political figure caught between the Ottoman Empire and Russia. 
In 2006, the Romanian public television ran a vote to determine whom the general public considered the top 100 greatest Romanians of all time. A similar version of British TV show 100 Greatest Britons. Cantemir would be voted 54th in this top. For historians, scholars of Romanian language and musicologists, he has been and still is a great point of reference and one of the catalysts for the early modernization of Moldova and later on Romania as a whole. Thank you for listening to this special episode of the podcast about Dimitri Cantemir. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't so far, please subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss any new material from the podcast. And please check the other playlists of the podcast. Until the next time, all the best.